What actually is Lembas, that waybred Galadriel gives the fellowship that seems almost too good and too nutritious to be true? Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. On this channel we cover The Lord of the Rings, A Song of Ice and Fire, and much more. If you love in-depth discussion of great fantasy and science fiction, this is the place for you. Welcome. Of all the gifts that Galadriel gave the Fellowship, the stocks of Limbus, Waybred, was one of the most important. Without its sustenance, it's highly unlikely that Frodo and Sam would have made it as far as they did. The plain of Gorgoroth is an arid wasteland, and without the Lembus, they would literally have starved before getting close to Mount Doom. And it keeps Aragorn, Gimli and Legolas's strength up as they run for days after the orcs that had captured Merry and Pippin. But what is it? Simply put, it is a crisp, dry, meal-based cake or biscuit with great nutritional value. It reminds Gimli of Cram, a biscuit-like travel food made by the men of Dale and Lake Town and shared with the dwarves of Erebor, but it is tastier, much tastier actually. He declares that it is even nicer than the honey cakes of the Bee Awnings. High praise indeed. Lembas is light brown on the outside and creamy white inside. It is traditionally packed up in leaf wrappings, and if left unopened and unbroken, can last for considerable periods of time. Being waybred, waybred being the literal translation of Lembas, it is intended to be taken on journeys, though unlike Cram, it's more for emergencies than general usage. In the films, Legolas claims that one small bite is enough to fill the stomach of a grown man. Q jokes about how much of it Merry and Pippin have already eaten. In the books, it still seems filling, though perhaps not to quite the same extreme extent. When handing it over to the Fellowship, one of the elves says that one cake will keep a traveller on his feet for a day of long labour, even if he be one of the tall men of Minas Tirith. The inspiration for this near-magical food has been the cause of much speculation. Its closest real-world equivalent that Tolkien will definitely have been aware of is a hard tack, a hard-baked bread that could last for extended periods of time without going off and was often used as rations for sailors on long trips. And as a soldier in World War I, Tolkien probably had some. There may also be a link, if only a linguistic one, to Lamas bread, a tradition where a loaf of bread from the first crop of wheat each year, traditionally at Lammastide, was taken to church and blessed. But most scholars see the strongest link here with communion wafers. Tolkien disliked allegory, but even the greatest writers cannot help allow some of their own worldview to creep into their writings, and Tolkien, in one of his letters, even acknowledged the similarity between Lembas and Eucharistic bread. Bread and yet not bread. Wafers presented as a gift not earned and capable of sustaining body and soul in the long journey of life. Others have noted a similarity to manna from heaven, which appears in the Hebrew Bible and the Old Testament, sustaining the Israelite people in their journeys through the desert. Indeed, the origins of Lembus in Middle-earth are godly, inasmuch as they come from the gods, the Valar. The corn that it is made from grows in the undying lands, and it was Yavanna who first harvested it and made Lembus. Orome, the hunter, then gave it to the elves on their first great voyage west, when the Valar called to them to leave Middle-earth and reside with them in a man. So this was literally a gift from the gods, a foretaste of the undying lands they were travelling to. As a gift from Yavanna, the secret to making it passed on to Melian the Maya, who became Queen of the Elves in Doriath. It then became a tradition that Lembas could only be made by women, who were known as the Yevanildi in honour of Yavanna. Only they knew its secret recipe, and only queens of the elves were allowed to store and distribute it, and they became known as Masanye. This was a special, holy item of nourishment, not one that was for every day. And it was not one usually for non-elves. So holy was it that it was felt that mortals who tasted it would forever long for immortality and a life among the elves. Potent stuff. And when you think about it, three of the six non-elves who ate it in the story, Sam, Frodo and Gimli, all did decide to sail west eventually. We actually have quite a lot of information about Lembas for what could have been just a random foodstuff in Tolkien's Legendarium, and that's because it's one of those topics that Tolkien took it upon himself to write a lengthy essay on. 
of Lembas, which you can find in the book Peoples of Middle-earth. In there, we discover a few secrets of how Lembas was made. It uses a special kind of corn or wheat that came from the Western continent, a man, and although it was hardy and needed relatively little sunlight to grow, and could seemingly grow in any season other than winter, it did need to be protected. It couldn't grow in the shadow of any other plants and would wilt in northerly winds while Morgoth lived in the north. We read that the Eldar grew it in guarded lands and sunlit glades, and they gathered its great golden ears, each one by hand, and set no blade of metal to it. The ears were used to make lembas, and the stalks did not go to waste, being woven into baskets. Even the straw by-product was useful, being impervious to mould, rot, and insects. All of which, of course, begs the question, why? Why was this corn so special? The answer, of course, is that it came from the Undying Lands. It was full, we're told, of the strong life of a man, which it could impart to those who had the need and right to use the bread. So, although Tolkien shies away from describing things as magical, per se, there is definitely something, well, magical about this. The properties of both the lembas itself and the straw made from the corn are about abiding and staying strong, being impervious to ageing, wilting, going off. This is the undying lands in action. We shouldn't therefore be looking for scientific explanations of exactly what it is, as Tolkien pithily remarks in one of his letters. We are not exploring the moon or any other more improbable region. No analysis in any laboratory would discover chemical properties of Lembas that made it superior to other cakes of wheat meal. Tolkien goes on to say that it also has a much larger significance of what one might hesitatingly call a religious kind. This becomes later apparent, especially in the chapter Mount Doom and subsequently. We'll get onto that Mount Doom chapter in a moment. For now, the important point is that Lembas is special not because of any elf technological secret, but for magical and spiritual reasons. It can grow only when not impacted by the decay of life on Middle-earth, the shade of normal plants, or Morgoth's corrupting influence. And crucially, it only imparts its magical properties to bless those who have both the need and the right to use the bread. It wasn't just magic whey bread that anyone could use, it was a gift, almost like a blessing from the gods for those who needed it. As Mary notes, Lembas does put heart into you, a more wholesome sort of feeling too than the heat of that orc draught. Needless to say, those without right and need for it not only don't get its blessing, but seem actively repelled by it. The orcs that capture Frodo seemingly hate the look of it, and Gollum is rather dramatically disgusted by everything to do with it. So now we're starting to understand why this was so special to the elves, and why they gave it out so infrequently, particularly to outsiders. The first instance we read of this happening was when Melian herself gave some lembas to Beleg the elf to share with Turin the human, whose tragic story we read in The Children of Hurin. In the Silmarillion we read that she gave him store of lembas, the waybread of the elves, wrapped in leaves of silver, and the threads that bound it were sealed at the knots with the seal of the queen, a wafer of white wax shaped as a single flower of Telperion. For according to the customs of the Aldalia, the keeping and giving of Lembas belonged to the Queen alone. In nothing did Melian show greater favour to Turin than in this gift, for the Eldar had never before allowed men to use this waybread, and seldom did so again. We hear of its later being given to the elf sailors who sailed west at the behest of Turgon seeking aid from the Valar. Only one of them, Voronwe, survived and shared his lembas with Tuor, another human, and Turin's cousin when they travelled to Gondolin. Finally, we have Galadriel gifting it to the Fellowship, a gift which will literally save Frodo and Sam's lives, and in turn allow them to save Middle-earth. It's easy to gloss over the gift as just a glorified packed lunch for the Fellowship, but this was so much more. It was Galadriel gifting the blessing of the gods on them. And although it had been given before to a couple of very special humans, this was the first time we read of that it was given to hobbits and a dwarf as well. The gift of it to Gimli is quite significant, actually, given the historic enmity between those two races. 
Lembas is very special to the elves, almost holy, but it is also natural. Yes, it has so-called magical properties, but it is also grown and cultivated, made according to a clear recipe, and needs to be stored in certain ways. It is one of the clearest examples of how Tolkien treated the natural world and our interaction with it as special. Which brings me back to that chapter, Mount Doom, that Tolkien specifically says shows the religious or spiritual significance of Lembas. We read this from near the very end of Frodo and Sam's journey. The Lembas had a virtue without which they would have long ago lain down to die. It did not satisfy desire, and at times Sam's mind was filled with the memories of food and the longing for simple bread and meats, and yet this waybread of the elves had a potency that increased as travellers relied on it alone and did not mingle it with other foods. It fed the will, and it gave strength to endure and to master sinew and limb beyond the measure of mortal kind. To Tolkien, the natural world around him was special, and so food made from that with a pure heart and hand in ways the gods themselves had handed down, and given as a gift freely and used as a last resort in a good cause, can be more than just food. It can be a blessing, nourishment for more than just normal physical needs, magical, and sometimes, just sometimes, maybe even a little bit holy like Lembas. If you'd like to see more videos on the world of J.R.R. Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings, please click on the link to the playlist on the left of your screen. Or if you'd like to support this channel, the best way to do that is by clicking on the link to my Patreon page on the right of the screen. Thanks for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.